This type of a circuit is called a bridge circuit. It's a very useful circuit. We will study this circuit in more detail later in the course. In fact, we will learn some more advanced techniques for handling a circuit like this. But for now, we have enough tools in Ohm's law, uh, Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage laws to be able to solve this problem using the tools that we have already studied. And so, as usual, we should maybe start with trying to classify the circuit. Uh, we've looked at, so far, series parallel and series parallel. So, can we classify it into one of these? Well, first thing we notice is it's series. We notice that it has no minor nodes. So, it can't be series. Then we see also that it has only principal nodes. We might be tempted at this point to say, oh, it's parallel. That is a characteristic of purely parallel circuits. However, it's not a unique characteristic. So, we can't use that to define it. In fact, none of these branches are between the same two principal nodes, so we can say that it's not parallel. Since we have no components in series with each other and no branches in parallel with each other, it cannot be series parallel. In fact, this is what we call a bridge circuit, and uh, we'll study this circuit in detail a little bit later in the course. But for now, even though it's not one of the three types of circuit configurations we've seen, we still can tackle it using the tools that we have at hand, Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws. This is called a delta configuration, and we'll learn some more advanced techniques for solving this type of a circuit later in the course. But for now, let's take a look at what we're given and what we uh, need to solve for. So, with the switch S1 open, 9.6 K ohms is measured between nodes A and B. So somebody has been kind enough to measure the total resistance of this circuit, and they've done it with the switch open, and as you recall, we always measure resistance uh, with power removed from the circuit. So we'll write down, first of all, uh, uh, that we have the total resistance, which is what was measured, is 9.6 times 10 to the third ohms. We're also given that we have a, an applied voltage of 24 volts. Remember that I've suggested that we always look for some component in the circuit that we know two pieces of information about and we could start there. Well, for the overall circuit we know it's applied voltage and we know it's total resistance. We can then find, knowing those two things, we can use Ohm's law to find the total current. And the total current is going to be 24 volts divided by 9.6 times 10 to the third ohms and we'll have I sub T, the total current, is 2.5 milliamps. Now, since we've referred to a current, we should label it here. That's I sub T, and we calculate that to be 2.5 milliamps. So now let's look and see what we're asked to find in part A. When the switch is closed, so the switch is closed, then current can flow. That applies power to the circuit. One milliamp flows through the 8K ohm resistor. Here's the 8K ohm resistor. So we'll have one milliamp here. How much current flows through R2? Here's R2. Since we're asked to find that, let's label it. Let's call that I sub 2. So in part A, we're asked to find I sub 2. Well, we take a look. We notice that here at node A, we we have three currents associated with node A. I sub T coming in, we know its value. This current through the 8K coming out, we know its value. And the current we need to solve for coming out, which we don't know. So it's the only unknown of those three currents. So we can use KCL at node A. When we do that, we will have current coming in, 2.5, that's all the current coming in, that's equal to the current going out, which is going to be 1 milliamp, and then plus I sub 2 is also coming out. So we have one unknown there, we can solve that for I sub 2, and that's the current we're looking for. I subtract 1 from both sides, I'll get I sub 2 is equal to 1.5 milliamps, which is what I was asked to find. Now for part B, 
what is the voltage across R3? Here's R3. I don't know anything about that component yet. First of all, label the voltage we're looking for. And I know that's the polarity because the electron current will be flowing down through here and then down through there. So it'll have this polarity. We'll call that V sub 3. So for part B, we're asked to find V sub 3. So the strategy will be if we could find this voltage, we could use KVL to find that voltage. So let's call this uh, current is flowing this direction. Let's call that V sub 8. And so the first thing we'll have to find is V sub 8. And we'll write that V sub 8 using Ohm's law is 1 milliamp times 8K ohms. And that'll be 1 times 8 is 8 volts. So we have 8 volts across that resistor. Now we're in a position to use KVL, write a loop. Um, involving these three voltages. The only unknown voltage is the one we're looking for. So let's start from B. Let's go uh, clockwise from B. I will get plus 24 minus 8 minus V3 then I'm back at node B so I can set that equal to 0. Now 24 minus 8 is 16. If I add V3 to both sides I'll get V3 is equal to 16 volts, which is what we were asked to find. Now for part C. If R2 has 6 volts across it, Here's R2, 6 volts. Let's go minus plus 6 volts here. What is the current through the 18K ohm resistor? Here's the 18K ohm resistor. So this is the current we're looking for. Let's call that I sub 18. So how could I find that? Well, let's label that minus plus v sub 18. Then notice that I know all the other voltages around this loop. So I could write a KVL loop to find that voltage if I knew all the other voltages. Uh, we just solved for V3, that's 16 volts. So I know all the other voltages except for my unknown. So I can use, first of all, KVL. Um, let's go uh, clockwise from node B and I would get 16 plus 8 keep going around the loop minus 6 and then finally minus V18 and we end up back at the same node we started so we'll set that equal to 0 now combining like terms over here and adding V sub 18 to the other side I get V sub 18 equals 16 minus 6 is 10 plus 8 is 18 volts. So that's the voltage across here, uh, 18 volts. So now that I know the voltage across that resistor, I know its resistance, I can find, then using Ohm's law, I can find the current. So I sub 18, the current we're looking for is 18 volts divided by 18 K ohms and that's going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 3 amps or that's going to be 1 milliamp. So 1 milliamp flows through the 18K and that's what we were asked to find. For part D, what is the resistance of R5. Here's R5 and I don't know anything about that component. So um, if I knew the voltage across that component and the current through that component I could use Ohm's law to find the resistance and that's the strategy that uh, I'm going to use. So I need to find this voltage. I will assume that the voltage has this polarity 
don't know that for sure. If I wrote it backwards, I'll get a negative sign on my answer. It'll be all right. And then this current, let's call that I sub 5. So I'm asked to find R sub 5. So first thing, can I find that voltage? Well, here's a loop. If I write a KVL loop here, I know that there are three voltages. I know two of them I can solve for the third. So I can write, uh, let's call that uh, node A. We can go KVL. Uh, we'll go clockwise from node A. So I'll start at A and go clockwise. I get minus 6 minus V5 plus 8 equals 0. Minus 6 minus V5 plus 8 equals 0. And I can solve that for V sub 5. Combining like terms here, negative 6 and 8 is negative 2. Move the negative uh, V5 to the other side and I get 2 volts. So I have 2 volts across here. This voltage is 2 volts. If I could find that current now, I sub 5, then I could uh, use Ohm's law. So it looks like if I look at this node, let's call it C, and if I have this current coming in and these two currents coming out, that's three currents. I know two of them I can solve for, for my current, I sub 5. So coming in, I have I sub 2. That's KCL at node C, and I have... Uh, coming in, I have 1.5 milliamps, and going out, I have 1 milliamp, and I also have my unknown, I sub 5. I can solve that for I sub 5, subtract 1 from both sides, and I get I sub 5 equals a half a milliamp, or 500 microamps. So that's I5 here is. 0.5 milliamps. Now, third thing is, since I know the current and the voltage associated with that resistor, I can use Ohm's law to find the resistance. So I have the voltage was 2 volts divided by half milliamp. And dividing by half, same as multiplying by 2, so I have 2 times 2 is 4 times 10 to the third, that'll be in ohms, or 4 k ohms. And that's what we were asked to find.